Today, I will be showing you how to make plastic keychains of characters from your favorite anime. We will be using shrink plastic to make the charms. This can easily be found on Amazon or at your local craft store. As you can see here, shrink plastic is rough on one side and shiny on the other. Next, we need something to color with. I will be using color pencils from Prismacolor, but you can also use Posca markers or Sharpies if you prefer. I will also be using a fine tip permanent marker just to outline my shapes. We also need a couple of keychains. These were purchased from Amazon. I also like to use jump rings to attach the shrink plastic onto the keychains. These are a lot more flexible than the rings on the actual key rings. We need a pair of scissors to cut the shapes out of the shrink plastic. And also a hole puncher. Today, I want to make plastic charms of chibi haiku characters. I will be looking up reference photos online, but you can also draw each character from scratch. I've decided to make key charms out of this photo, so I will be printing them out. Shrink plastic often shrinks down to a third or a quarter of its original size after baking. So make sure you take that into account and blow up your reference photo when you're printing it. I forgot to mention you will also need pliers to open up jump rings with and also a varnish to finish off your charms. So the first character I will work on is Hinata. Like I mentioned before, shrink plastic has two sides. One side is very rough, the other side is very shiny. We will be working with the shiny side down so we can color on the rough side. I'll start off by outlining Hinata using a permanent fine tip marker. This is because I'll be using a lot of light color color pencils later on. The color pencils I'll be using later on have a really soft core. So if I were to outline using a black color pencil and then color it in using a light color such as white or peach, it'll likely smudge the lines. Now that I'm done outlining, it's time to get started with coloring. I'll start off with using white because that's the lightest color we'll be using today. Note that I tested the color pencil on the side to make sure that there were no other color impurities that was on the lead. Here I am going in with a light gray color pencil to shade in the creases of Hinata's shirt. using peach as his skin tone for his face, arms, and legs. I decided to use a beige gray for the shadows on his skin. Now it's time to shade in his iconic orange hair. First, I went in using a dark orange to shade in all the shadows of his hair. Then I filled in everything else with a bright, light orange. Now it's time for the eyes. I will be mixing various shades of light brown and orange. After all the light colors are down, I will be outlining everything with a black colored pencil. This will make all the lines pop without smudging any of the light colors. we can't forget about the other half of the first year freak duels. Similar to the Hinata charm, I worked in the order of the lightest to the darkest color starting with white. Since Kageyama's figure has so much black in the color palette, it's very important to be detail oriented and not miss any of the highlights. Otherwise, the charm would look very flat. about the supporting characters. In my opinion, Haikyuu has one of the best supporting casts, with super memorable and unique character designs and a lot of character development. 
I'm sure you can see that I had to test out a lot of color pencils on the corner of my page to find the right shades for Oikawa. Next, I'll be working on my favorite character, Kuro. Side note, I really like how the sunlight is filtering in today. I think it casts a really pretty glow. So I decided to use silver to do the highlights on Kuro's hair. Honestly, I'm not sure if it's the right idea. I think I much prefer the light gray on Kageyama's hair. This time, I will be outlining his outfit first before filling it in. Because his jersey is red and not a light color, I'm not too worried about the black blending in. I periodically flip the shrink plastic over just to see how it looks on the other side. This lets me see any areas that I need to touch up on to make the colors more opaque. Now it's time to draw Kenma. For Kenma, I actually won't start off using the lightest colors. Instead, I will go in using an ashy beigey brown. This is because I actually want to blend the darker parts of his hair with the lighter parts. I'm just going over it a few more times to make sure the colors are very opaque. The last charm I'll be making will be Bokuto. This was actually quite a difficult one to shade in because of Bokuto's crazy hair highlights. After all the charms have been drawn, it's time to cut them out. One finicky thing about shrink plastic is that the shrink plastic will actually crack if you are turning corners too quickly or too sharply when you are cutting them. This is why I recommend cutting out simple shapes even though each character has very detailed outlines. I generally leave an outline around each character so I can minimize the amount of turns I have to make with my scissors. I also cut out a protruding tab on top of each character so that there is some place I can hole punch. After all the charms are cut out, it's time to bake them. I would recommend baking them on a flat baking sheet. This is because you want the charms to lay flat once they have shrunk in the oven. However, my baking sheet has ridges and I'm too lazy to go out and buy a new one. So I took the removable bottom of a cake pan and put it in the baking sheet to create a flat surface. I will be baking the plastic charms at 325 degrees Fahrenheit 
for one to three minutes, depending on the situation. You should also double check the instructions that accompany your shrink plastic. That will give you a better idea of the baking temperature and time. One important thing to watch out for is to make sure that you're not baking too many charms at once, and to make sure that the charms aren't too close together. You don't want them touching and accidentally fusing together. While baking, the shrink plastic will curl up and then shrink down. It's time to pull them out when the charms are flat again. This usually takes between 1 to 3 minutes in an oven that's been preheated. Once you take a plastic charm out of the oven, you have to work quickly and make sure that it's pressed down so it lays flat. I will show you that later. But first, I'll insert a few more clips of the shrink plastic shrinking. Like I mentioned, it's very important to press the charms flat once you take them out of the oven, especially if you are using a ridged baking sheet like I am. Just make sure that whatever you are using to press the charms is flat. Uh, I recommend using a hard copy book, but if you don't have one on hand, a paperback works as well. Just make sure you have something heavy you can put on top and press down. It's also super important to sandwich your plastic charm in between parchment paper so it doesn't stick to the book. I like to leave the plastic charms until they're fully cooled. Usually that takes 15 to 30 minutes for me. Ta-da! Here are all the charms after they have been pressed. The last step is to assemble the keychains. I will be using a jump ring to connect the charm to the keychain. With the opening facing towards the top, hold the jump ring with one plier. Use the other plier and turn the jump ring open. Hook the hole punch of the charm onto the jump ring. Then hook on the chain of the keychain. Finally, you can close the jump ring using the other plier. And voila! Here you have your own DIY Haiku keychain of your favorite character. Now I will just repeat this process and add keychains onto each of the remaining characters. We're all done! Thanks so much for watching! I had a lot of fun creating this tutorial, so let me know in the comments if there's any other types of videos you want to see. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time!